welcome to another video. So I'll be honest, I am kind of struggling to think of ideas of what videos to do now at the moment. This is lockdown, and as a few YouTubers have said, when they're making videos, they're now struggling for content. And let's be honest, I can do it. I could do a cheat meal. I could do 10,000 calories. I could do 15,000 calories. I could go to McDonald's now, and I could buy a load of food and eat all that. But I'm currently dying at the moment, so there'll be no cheat days, no cheat meals, no 10k calorie challenges or anything like that. I'm just going to take you through my normal um, full day of eating. Uh, full day of eating seems to be something that's quite popular. So that's what I'm going to do today. Um, first of all, my main priority when I get up in the morning is my oats. So um, what I can usually do is get dressed or whatever, come straight down and soak my oats. The reason I soak the oats, they just cook better in the microwave once you've left them soak for about an hour or half an hour maybe. You can put them straight in the microwave but it doesn't really matter. But so. My main priority is I come down, stick the oats in the bowl, but luckily this morning the missus got up. I got up really late today, I think I got up at um, half ten, so um, it's a lot later than I planned on getting up. But to be honest with you, I'm on the same amount of calories. It doesn't matter if I get up at nine o'clock or twelve o'clock, I still eat the same amount of calories in the same window. And um, yeah, I, it's the way it is. So first of all, 100 grams of oats soaking in the bowl. Um, and before I even start the day or eat anything, I go for my walk. So I do around five to six thousand steps. It takes me about 50, 45 to fifty minutes. So I'm gonna go um, get my trainers on, um, grab my coat because it's currently raining outside. Not raining, but it's drizzly outside. So um, yeah, the weather's taken a turn for the worst. It was really sunny um, at the beginning um, of lockdown, but now it's just seems to have rained. So um, quite a lot the past few days. So check my trainers on grab my coat and I'll take you guys on my morning walk. It's pretty windy over here so apologies if you can't hear what I'm saying but uh, yeah I usually get up in the mornings, have a glass of water, don't eat anything and I come straight for a uh, morning walk. Like I said between you get, get about four to six thousand steps in, that's the bulk of my steps done for the day then. I don't have to worry about them anymore. It's been a godsend this year, um, lockdown for me because I was doing Stairmaster every single, well, I'd say every single day, probably four to five times a week for anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes. And it absolutely killed me. I'm finding increasing my steps to around 12 to 13,000 a day. It's just um, helped me with the fat loss, to be honest, on the cut. And um, I don't know if it's Stairmaster, even thinking about going back to using one. Is awful. It used to just destroy my legs as well. So I used to um, do them around leg day as well, which just made your legs feel so heavy. I think it affected my workouts in the end. But um, yeah, I'm uh, pretty much finishing this up, uh, this walk. Um, we've got about yeah a third left to do. Um, this park is literally 50 meters from my house, where the entrance is rather. Um, put over here every morning. I do then come back here to do an evening walk. And um, yeah, get the rest of my steps in. Um, that's another 3,000 steps walk, but um, yeah, throughout the day, then in and around the house, walking about, I do another like five, six thousand, so um, including that walk. So I end up on about 12, like I said. So I finish this walk up. Um, I'm pretty hungry now, as per usual, on the diet. And um, yeah, I'm gonna get home and smash my breakfast. Uh, what's up guys, just go back for my walk, um, pretty hungry now, but to start off with, I'm not going to eat my breakfast straight away, I'm going to show you what I do for my evening meal. So I've got 800 grams of beef, got two packets here, what we like to do um, is sear the beef off, um, season it with some seasoning and then stick it in a slow cooker for 8 hours on low, and trust me it will be the best beef you ever have, so we end up having um, fajita chicken with that, so we mix it with peppers and onions and fry it off with the um, fajita seasoning at the end in the pan but don't worry we'll get to that so I'm just going to show you what I do for this so like I said grab the beef fry it off add some onion granules to it and add some garlic pepper and then all you need then is one oxo cube take the oxo cube put 400 ml in a jug somewhere but bang the um, oxo cube in there chuck the um, the beef stock into the slow cooker and as you're frying off the beef just dump it into the slow cooker there and um, yeah, and away you go. Literally turn it on for eight hours and your beef's done. The dinner will then take around five, six minutes to complete at the end of the day. So um, you get amazing tender beef 
Um, honestly, I can't recommend this enough. If you fry this off straight away into one eat it, it'd be really chewy and horrible. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna get to it, fry this off and get it in the slow cooker. Beef all fried off, um, like I said before, 800 grams of diced beef, fry it off in the pan, stick it in the slow cooker, pour over the top, 400 ml of water with a uh, beef stock inside, leave it eight hours on low, literally you'll have the best beef ever. And we have this with, um, like I said, fajita uh, mix, peppers and onions on top of rice, and honestly it makes, makes the bodybuilding diet, so to speak, um, a lot nicer to um, eat. So um, yeah, I'll show you with the slow cooker quickly. That's what it looks like. Um, yeah, so once that's done, eight hours in there, and it's golden. Honestly, it's amazing. So, yeah, I'm gonna let that cook um, all day. The only problem is the house literally stinks of beef, the whole house, so you make sure you shut your doors. We usually cook this outside, but it's raining, so um, let's cook it inside. You end up smelling like a steakhouse all day, but it's not a bad thing, I don't think. So, um, yeah, let's get on to breakfast, because I am starving. Right, it's time for breakfast. I'm so hungry now. It's like nearly one o'clock, so it's a bit late for eating breakfast, but it doesn't matter because I eat the same amount of calories every day. If the window's shorter, if it's longer, it doesn't really matter. I still eat the same amount of calories. So, it's smash breakfast now. Like I said to you before, 100 grams of oats soaked in a bowl with 330 ml of water. What I add to it is whey protein, um, chocolate whey. It's not um, gold standard, I add, it's my protein, um, uh, whey protein. Um, I just use the tub, I recycle the tub basically. And I add some um, cocoa powder in there. And then about 60 grams of banana. And literally it's the best thing, especially when you're dieting as well. It's one of my favorite meals of the day. I look forward to it every day. So I literally get around the park as quick as I can on my um, 10K steps. And then I um, come home and I just you can't wait to eat this breakfast every day. So people say, why don't you get bored of it? It's like, I don't get bored of it. You've probably seen it on the channel before. So um, yeah, I'm gonna get to it. Knock this up and I'll show you what it looks like at the end. Right, the oats are finally done. About to smash these, I'm so hungry. So, yeah, literally all it is is um, 100 grams of oats, 40 grams of whey protein, 10 grams of um, cocoa powder, and 70 grams of banana. And that is simply it. And it's my favourite meal of the day. So I'll show you a close up of it now. This is not the most appetizing thing, but um, honestly, it's so good. Um, definitely recommend trying it. Even just try it one day, I guarantee you will never eat anything else at breakfast again. So um, uh, yeah, I'm gonna try down on this, um, watch some YouTube at my computer, and yeah, see you guys at the next meal. Lunchtime. Um, it's actually I say lunchtime. It's actually ten to four, so probably not lunchtime. But anyway, um, I'll work out in about an hour and a half, so I need to really get this down my neck. So when I'm doing legs, I don't throw up all over the floor. So um, yeah, um, for um, 
Lunch, I've got these heck chicken burgers. You've probably seen these around um, on Instagram and various other sites, but they're literally amazing, the burgers. They're low fat. I think it's about 48 grams of protein per two burgers. So uh, high in protein, low in fat, and they're great. What I put them with is I have Warburton's thins with them. So basically you're making like a, a healthy or a low calorie burger essentially. Um, these are really good, especially when you're dieting because you crave stuff like burgers and chips and stuff. But I find eating a chicken burger like this with some sandwich thins, you know, I, I don't really see the difference to be honest, but um, people might disagree with me, but I quite enjoy eating stuff like this. It's kind of alternatives, healthy alternatives. So I'm gonna fry these burgers off, sear them a minute each side, stick the lid on, simmer them for 10 minutes, and um, yeah, I'll show you uh, the finished burger. Right, so lunch is done. Um, I'm hungry now, so as per usual, hungry, starving, one of those two I always say. Um, done the burgers, um, I'll show you what I got. I also got some snacks I have for my lunch usually. Um, usually I have eggs and bagel, but I had some stuff to use up in the fridge, so I thought it was a good time to use the uh, burgers up. So um, I'm just gonna chow down on this stuff now and um, watch a bit of YouTube, but um, I'll show you what I got. So there's the burgers, and I've got a chocolate rice cake with some peanut butter and an apple. To be honest, um, it is really hard to um, change up the full day of eating because I do eat the same things every day. So um, yeah, the burgers I have quite often. I've got four more packs in there. And I've got I eat apples every day. I eat the rice cakes with the peanut butter every day. So um, my breakfast is pretty much the same. Just got some YouTube on the um, thing. I've some Max tuning um, sport a house. So um, I'm going to watch this uh, latest vlog on his. Um, yeah, and I got a leg workout coming up soon. So I'll pop the calories up on the screen for this meal and all the other previous meals and um, hopefully you guys can take some tips um, and then I've got the chilli coming this evening, I say chilli, no sorry, fajitas coming this evening with the slow cooked beef so um, looking forward to that. Like on a diet I'm always looking forward to my food, um, every meal that comes to you I'm always looking forward to it. Um, I'm going to smash this down now, um, like I said it's just the two half burgers with um, some light um, baby bell cheese on the top, um, an apple and a rice cake with some peanut butter. Like I said, the calories will be up on the screen somewhere, so let's get to it. Straight into workout time. To be honest, I'm not feeling it today whatsoever. The motivation levels for these home workouts are absolutely dreadful at the moment, so um, definitely a day for pre-workout, to be honest. Um, I, just, I just feel lethargic today. I'm not really sure why, but um, that's plenty, I say plenty of sleep. I haven't been sleeping that well. I've been kind of broken and disturbed sleep, so... Um, Maybe that's the reason why, but it's definitely going to be a uh, pre-workout day. It's leg day today. Leg day is getting very boring for me because you're obviously so restricted to what you can do at home with leg day, and especially by the amount of weights and stuff you've got. So, um, and the very same. If you're still, you can use the resistance bands. You can slow the tempo of the reps down. To be honest, I'm just not feeling them anymore. I don't train legs to use resistance bands and all that kind of thing. I train legs because I enjoy moving weights. The resistance bands are not the same. Um, I don't care what anybody says, it's not the same feeling as walking into the gym and training legs, to be honest. So, um, just got this new pre workout. I think you've probably seen it in my last video. It's uh, Naughty Boy Menace um, pineapple flavour. It's so good, it tastes really good. Um, that's what I like on pre workouts. It's almost like a, a sweet treat, if that makes sense as well. Um, but yeah, I've got a small cup of this here. I'm just going to chug this down now, get this. Um, in me and um, do a quick warm up. I like to stretch off and um, roll my um, IT band and my hips and stuff um, before legs because they're quite stiff. So, uh, neck this, go upstairs, put my leggings on, and get to the workout. Because if I don't do it now, I'll never do it. So, um, I'll record the workout and you'll see the workout in the next few clips. Midway through my first exercise on. Um, legs is goblet squat it's the most sketchy exercise ever because you have to fudge some of the weights together to get the weight up so my dumbbells kind of run out of space so i kind of club something together to get the uh dumbbell to work pretty well but um it's the most sketchiest set i've ever done that's why i'm missing the gym because you shouldn't have to go to all this bloody effort just to uh do a set of goblet squats but um screw it you know 
try and make the most of the, of the home workouts if I can. There's no point sitting there saying, oh, I'm not going to work out because I haven't got the facilities or the equipment, but you just got to get your head down and just fucking use what you've got and crack on with it. So this is what the weight setup looks like currently. It's honestly the most fudged together thing you'll ever see, but I'm going to give this a crack now. I'll film this so you guys can uh, think. So this is the first exercise in Scarlet Squat. Right, I thought I'd do a commentary over the top, considering I haven't done one in a while. Um, as you can see, this is the um, this is my fourth working set. I think it is on goblet squats. As you can see, it's pretty sketchy these sets. So I've got a dumbbell with the screw collars on them, with another dumbbell attached with an ankle strap with ten kilos dangling off it. The um, center of gravity, the weight isn't great on this. It actually hurt my hurt my back quite badly. So um, I wouldn't really recommend this, but. To be honest, I was getting so used to lifting the same weight every single week, and there was no way of me really increasing the weight apart from, you know, using an, um, I got a five kilo kettlebell that I used to wrap around the bar. Then I had then this idea, but um, luckily now I've got some extra long bars which can take significantly more weight, which I think get the bar up to about fifty kilos rather than I think I've got forty kilos in weight on there plus the bar weight. So um, yeah, this is my fifth working set. I do the do rate goblet squats to be honest. They do target the um, um, the legs and differently to a back squat. Um, I prefer these over doing a front squat to be honest because front squats just end up hurting the front delts and um, you know if I've got shoulders or chest coming up afterwards, I then do chest two days after legs. So or the day after legs, sorry. So sometimes my front delts are shot a bit. So only from not from a whole, not from um, the actual uh, muscle being taxed, but where the weight's resting or the bar is resting on the muscle, um, it's really hard to think. So as you can see, it's pretty sketchy. Um, if one of these falls on the, on my feet, uh, I'm actually barefoot at the minute, it'd be game over for my feet. So um, you know, um, I am literally sick to death of these home workouts. I must, must admit, they're nothing like working out at the gym. Um, I train legs because I enjoy doing certain exercises. Doing this stuff, trying to, you know, it takes me almost 10 minutes really to set up on legs just at home. So um, it's really frustrating when, um, you know, I could be in the gym, but, you know, it's, the gyms are closed for a reason and you just got to get on with it. I'm not going to complain too much because I've got a not bad setup, but just struggling really for um, the amount of weight uh, available to me um, at home. So um, this is my um, back offset, really. Um, like I said, the center of gravity of the weight isn't great. Um, so on this side, just backed the weight off a little, made sure I got my form in check, and um, yeah, it was a it's a it's a good it's a good exercise. The problem I was having in the gym uh, before lockdown was the fifty kilo dumbbells weren't enough. So um, when I get back to the gym eventually, I'll be looking at probably joining a different gym with um, more equipment and better weights in there, especially on. Um, days like back and legs you want you want the equipment you know a lot of people make good gains and um, development on their physique because they go to a good gym i'm a firm believer in some equipment's better than others so that's exercise number one done on to exercise number two um these are garbage bin squats i like to call them these are probably the most awkward things in the world to do. Um, the bins are on gravel so they don't tip over there's plenty enough in the bin to not the bins to fall over as you can see the other one's moving there the black bin um and the bar's pretty much got as much weight capable on it um, i do have more plates currently that came in the post after this workout but um yeah i've literally maxed up the bar here um you know on the bar at the moment i can see there's probably not much more than it's about probably 80 kilos including the bar weight which is not a lot um that's the thing i have struggled with in lockdown is um is the amount of weight have available to myself especially on these one inch um weight bars and um weight plates is um they usually come in five kilos at a time um the cost of the 10 kilos and above uh, plates is so expensive online i just can't bring myself to buy them i've already bought plenty of equipment online i probably spent around 300 quid on different stuff already so um i've already paid 50 pounds for a set of extended dumbbells which didn't turn up which are the 18 inch rather than the 14 inch so um you know i'm you get by with certain stuff. There's only, there's only so much of it you can do, though. Um, I think once, um, you know, he's done this for a few weeks, it's a bit repetitive. I'm finding I was enjoying the leg workouts at the beginning at home, but it just becomes more and more of a ball ache, like, um, like dragging the bins from the front of the house to the back to rest the weight on 
I've in this video the bin is not damaged, but I've actually damaged the bin now um, where the lid split, where I put so much weight on there. And um, trying to get the weight off the bins is ridiculous. I scratched all my uh, new um, Apple Watch on the bin where um, your hands are tighter in the um, when you grab the bar. And as I put it down onto the um, onto the bins, it caught all the face, which is why my watch is turned the other way um, in this video. Um, as you can see, it's so awkward to put the weight back. My face is pressed against the fence, and it's just ridiculous. Um, to be fair, though, the amount of weight I've got available is is de decent enough. Um, you know, you can get by, like I said, with it, and use you know, some stimulation to the muscle, so to speak. But um, again, this is um, my back offset at the end uh, for the final uh, set on squats. Um, if anyone's interested, there's nothing really technical about a back offset. A back offset is just a set where, say for the fourth set, I squatted 120 kilos for a back offset for the fifth and final set. You maybe reduce it down to maybe 80 or 100, a weight where you're more comfortable, but your form is improved, so to speak, and um, maybe you get a slightly more volume out, where, say, on the 120 kilos, you were getting eight reps. With 100 kilos, you might get 12. So um, that's the, the reasoning behind back offset. There's no, um, there's no tricks or um, in-depth science around it. That's just the, the name that comes along with it. So, um, yeah, I do enjoy doing a back offset. Um, it does help with... Um, I know prog progressively overloading the muscle for the first four sets and then the back off sets almost just like a finisher so to speak so um yeah i guess that concludes exercise number two so for exercise number three it was rdls unfortunately on this i'm not restricted by the amount of weight i've got um rdls are something i started doing towards the end of 2019 and took it into the new year until um lockdown occurred um i do enjoy do i say i tell a lie i don't enjoy doing rdls because i wasn't very good at them but i think i've adopted the technique quite well now and um i don't lift a huge amount of weight i think i was lifting 60 kilos on the bar in the gym before lockdown occurred um when doing it at home i back the weight off and just ensure my um form is fully in check um i still do struggle to get a connection with one of my hamstrings on my, le on my left leg, I don't really know why. Um, slight imbalance, my hamstring on my right leg's a lot more developed than my left. You wouldn't see my eye, but I just know it is. So um, RDLs are something I'm trying to you know, incorporate a lot more into my um, routine. Obviously, with the gyms being closed, it's a bit harder. But um, no, I back the weight off, do six sets of 12 to 15, uh, make sure they're controlled, and um, actually engage in the muscle. Um, I think sometimes it's best back to peel the weight peel back the weight sometimes and just actually use a weight you actually feel a good connection with the muscle with some i see some people lifting the gym and they and you must think to yourself like you know i can't even see you making a good connection with the muscle there you're just lifting or just moving the weight from a to b really uh this being the um third exercise for legs um i completed six sets or six working sets on each of these exercises hence 18 working sets in total and around uh 21 including the warmer which i don't really include the warmer to be honest and that concludes the uh, home leg workout um i'm sorry if you haven't got the equipment to do the same exercise as me but i'm just utilizing what i got and like anybody else would i guess right so that's the concludes the uh, leg workout three exercises 18 sets some of you might go oh that wasn't very many exercises for legs but trust me six sets on each of those exercises after if you do them properly it's it pretty hard to be honest it doesn't include any of my warm-up sets either so usually i start with a really low weight and each of the exercises i work my way up the reason for that is just to get in the rhythm get kind of the motion of the exercise sorted in my form and then i go straight into working sets then so in reality you could argue it's 21 sets but um i don't like to count them because the weight's very minimal but i just try and get the motion going in the exercise so 18 sets done uh time is now 25 to 9 so again guess what i'm pretty hungry so every episode every every video but i've heated chicken ready in the slow cooker i've still got to finish off some steps unfortunately beef fajita beef what did i say what did i say fajita chicken sorry i got correct there's fajita beef you actually seen it in the videos so you know it's beef 
Um, Louise being pedantic over there. <laughs> um, yeah, so if he'd be even to look at ready, if you want to get back, go about 2,000 steps, so that's literally to the top of the park and back. It'll take me 20 minutes, not long at all. And then thankfully, I've got a good portion of rice to eat, a good portion of beef, should be pretty full. And any snacks I have after, I'll put, I won't will forget to put them in the video. So let's get these steps done. Right, the walk is done. It's getting late now. Shouldn't really eat this late. It's 20 to 10, but it is what it is. I got up late today. It's my own fault. So this is a heat of beef. Just um, weighed out 220 grams out of the slow cooker. Lou was impatient. She couldn't wait for it. So start with this. I literally take uh, 100 grams of pepper and some red onion. Throw off the onion for a couple of minutes into the pan. Simple as that. After a couple of minutes, add the peppers in. Once you're happy they're cooked enough, throw in the hot beef. And then all you need to do at the bottom, at the end is add in some of the old El Paso um, beef fajitas. This is quite high in salt, but to be honest, I don't really give a shit about the, um, the salt intake. I don't really use too much of that anyway, so um, that's just life. I'm natural anyway, so I don't need to worry about salt. We won't go down that avenue for right now. Um, <laughs> So I'm going to have a whole pack of this, which is a bonus. This is the whole grain um, basmati, no, whole grain, whole grain rice. Let's stir this before it starts burning. So that's the whole grain basmati rice. Don't usually have a whole pack of that, but my calories are allowing me to today because I'll just save some. So um, I'm going to cook all this up and I'll show you when it's finished. Right, meal number three. Um, I, I don't think you can guess what it is, it's beef fajitas. Um, I know I've gone on about it all day, but this is one of my favourite meals to be honest. The beef is so tender, honestly ridiculous. So you must try it. I'll pop the calories up on the screen for anyone who cares about that. With my daily total calorie intake as well, um, just for extra information. And I'll show you what I've got. So that's what I've got currently. It honestly is so good. It's absolutely ridiculous. It was so good that Lou ate it about two hours ago. So. Um, yeah, I can't wait to get into this. And to smash this, this is meal number three. I've got enough calories probably for one more snack. You probably know what it is. I'll keep it a surprise, but I'm gonna chow down on this. And that concludes meal number three. Right, last snack of the day um, to conclude this full day of eating. Um, I'm super predictable. Like I said to you at the beginning of the video, it's hard. Um, Especially when you're on a diet, to try and deviate off foods. I find if you change your days up too much, you start to feel hungry. So what I tend to do on a diet is kind of stick to the same foods in that way and eat them at the same time of day. And that way your body kind of adapts to some, almost like a, a food clock kind of thing. And I think it, it suppresses hunger, if I'm honest. So um, that's just my theory behind it. People might find it's best to switch it up so they don't get bored. But I'm the type of person who don't really get bored of food, to be honest. If I enjoy something, I tend to have it all the time. Um, so... Um, this is predictable as usual, um, you've seen this one before, it's Greek yoghurt, um, so 0% Greek yoghurt, it's the fake Aldi version, like I said a million times before, Aldi haven't got a clue about um, copyright, <laughs> it's literally like the fakest, the most like unsubtle version of the total Greek yoghurt, the Fai or Fage or whatever it's called, um, so literally 250 grams of that's half a tub, what I do I slam in 15 grams of vanilla whey protein. Right, 30 minutes later. I'm over in there. Right, so that's the protein. You can say, oh, what are you putting creatine in yoga for? But the creatine is so, it's such a fine powder, you can't even taste it. So I put three grams of that in there. Three grams of that in there. Just mix all that up and I stick. Then I put in um, 100 grams of blueberry. So um, I'm not going to bore you and show you mix it up and go, here's the finished product because it's just blueberries with yogurt. So I just mix it up, slam the 100 grams of, um, of blueberries in there, and that concludes my calories for the day. I'll pop the calories for total day on the screen. So um, if anyone happens to care, you'll see what I eat in a day. Just to give you a clue, it's 2,400 calories at the moment. So, um, yeah, that's really as low as I want to go, 2,400 calories. If I go any lower, the hunger starts to you know, get the better of me. I was like a bit um, t 
touchy and yeah, I don't really enjoy it. So I try not to really go, I'd rather put in more cardio than lower than the calories, if I'm honest. Um, so 2400 at the minute, and I'm pretty bang on today, so I'll pop them up on the screen uh, for anyone who cares. And um, yeah, I'm gonna sit down now and watch one of those, uh, the McMillions documentary about the Monopoly scam um, in the US. It's pretty good, it's made by HBO, I think Mark Wahlberg's a director or something in it. So it's it's good Good money was pumped into making it. So and I find it quite interesting, it's an easy watch, especially during the week, um, to save the better stuff for the weekend. But I'm gonna chat on this. Um, that concludes the day of eating. I hope you've taken some tips from it. If you have, hit the like button. If you haven't, don't hit the unlike button because it's not helping me. So um, yeah, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Most people who watch the video are probably not even subscribers, so just hit the subscribe button. Um, I'll try to pump the contact, content out as much as I can, but like a lot of YouTubers say at the moment, um, I don't class myself as a YouTuber, I just upload videos to YouTube, but the proper YouTubers, so to speak, um, they're even struggling for content at the moment, because just what can you do is you're stuck in the house, it's a home workout, um, homemade meals, and, there, and going for a walk, it's really you can't do a lot more than that, so um, yeah, I'm going to try and keep the content coming, so if you did enjoy, hit the thumbs up. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys in the next video.